come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button because all of that helps us rise through the algorithms that govern us all to become the fastest growing internet podcast We're too governed. in the galaxy. Too governed. These are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Holly is on assignment. Mm-hmm. Did she get swept out to sea maybe? Perhaps. Yeah. Lucky her. (laughs) (laughs) Ouch. Ouch. Uh, Tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. Uh, Colin. uh, Where did our movie come from tonight? (laughs) The Sea. The Sea. Yep. By what? By by who? Who uh, delivers this joke? It's a movie called The Witch Who Came From the Sea. Ah. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Directed by... uh, Matt Clymer, who is an exploitation movie um, director. I sensed that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what other um, anything we know? Yeah, he uh, he created like an eight minute uh, opening video that is played at the United Nations. What? I'm sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> still? Yeah. Those I are think. that is an opposing resume. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, right. I mean, he, he, I hope he, it's just the first eight minutes of this movie. He yeah. worked his way through the. Ra- I don't know. You know somebody to right. get sure, that job, sure, right? Sure, I mean, he had oh, done. I think to. the official Coca Cola documentary. Uh, prior oh, to that, okay, and, okay, uh, that'll get you some some inroads into, mm-hmm. into the, the United, UN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Coca Cola. Co- it's yeah. international. Yeah, it's worldwide. Mm-hmm. Makes um, sense. And it's from the year nineteen seventy six. Okay, seventy six. We were um, wondering about that. Seventy six. Okay. Yeah, because there's a lot of like uh, behind the scenes folks who kind of uh, are congealing at this point in time. Oh, and, Ew. <laughs> and crossing barriers and okay. other things that we sound like watched. society when you say congealing mm, congealed people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess before we get into the movie proper, so like one of the credits that stood out to me, like when we were first, when I first saw this movie is like, Oh, Dean Cundy. Uh, yes. He's credited as like the associate director of photography. Uh-huh. But the story is the actual director of photography like got fired and Dean Cundy took over. So Dean Cundy shot, you know, like gotcha. most of the movie. And this is 76, so Halloween is only two years away. Wow. And he's the guy with the wide anamorphic mm-hmm. lenses yep. and the yep. Panaglide and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, did you see a Dean Cundy style here? I'm going to tell you, the content of the movie did not allow me to Oh see yes, that. I um I forgot about the Dean Cundy yeah. of it all forgot the entire the time Cundy I was well. watching this movie because yes the the content in the movie kind of had me sucked into that yeah like that yeah. is what we were I was yeah. focused on yeah. like and I don't and think trying to be. untangle it yes. yeah okay well it's uh, all right well, 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 that's, so we're going down the right track for yeah. you Colin. okay yeah, yeah I've seen it a couple times so Jesus, um, if this was a final we're both failing Sean uh, yeah. we, we both the movie had us so entranced in what it was <laughs> trying to say we forgot that Dean Cundy was but that's yeah. I guess what a movie is supposed to do right mm-hmm. we're, we're, we're supposed to watch all movies that way but well, I, mean, I think technically, yeah. Holly told me once mm-hmm. she's like you watch movies like you're watching two movies movies when you're watching a movie you're watching the movie and the movie about the making of the movie yeah. right? how it's made and sometimes yes. if they're good right they, good, uh, they, forget they that. suck you right in yeah um this movie was a video nasty oh that on makes the sense. list that in the sense. uk it was banned for many many years a lot of people i don't think have ever heard of it have you guys ever heard of it no <laughs> no never i have not nope. at all um, it has a very uh, listener. If you're out there, I recommend that you look up the poster art for this movie. I'm not saying that it sells this movie. It's just really good artwork. It's good, yeah. It's really good artwork. Like, like if you're gonna have a movie called this, this is the artwork. For I it. would hang this poster up in my house for sure. As but a, as a warning to all men, yeah, I, I would say <laughs> it's a painted poster of this like witch demon mm-hmm. thing coming out of the sea with a cape like mm-hmm. flowing behind She's got her. A scythe. And a severed head in one hand. Now, if you've seen this on video, they always crop it so it's uh, like this. Oh, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> so you don't actually see the oh. severed head. 
That's too bad. But thanks yeah. to the good folks at Arrow Video, we've got uh, the full uh, poster on the on the reverse uh, cover. And she has what, like a scythe in her hand? Yeah. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. And a snake up her arm. Yeah, and it's very like blue green, like nasty old sea like yeah. vibe. Yeah. She looks like a witch. She's got mm-hmm. white in her hair. I think that might be a takeoff on a classic painting. Probably. Oh yeah. It feels. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Only they've kind of you know put Millie Perkins's face right. in there. Millie Perkins, the star of this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you and know she, Frank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Which I read on the back of this. I'm like, what? But it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. 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 Uh, she was a child actress, and uh, that was you know like a prestige movie, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and landed her in a big way, I think, in Hollywood. And then mm-hmm. the way that I heard that this movie came about was um, her, she was married to the writer uh robert tom right and he had and i don't recall what it was but a a severe uh medical condition and was in the hospital and the doctor bills were piling up and so from his hospital bed uh he wrote this movie and they basically conceived it as something that she could do he could sell it he knew uh matt Clymer, and it was like we can make a movie and the profits of the movie will basically go toward, you know, paying off his medical expenses. This <laughs> movie exists because of medical debt? Yeah. There you go. That says everything you need to know about America, right? <laughs> We're going to make a sleazy exploitation movie to pay off our medical debt. Of course. Uh, yeah. is Climber wow. or Simber? Sim- oh, sorry. Simber. Say, Simber. Uh, Matt I Simber. Matt Simber on the back yep. of that. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, Matt, if you're out there actually. I think you <laughs> yeah. Passed on. yeah, if you're still with us. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also in the credit, so I'm, uh, um, Millie Perkins is the lead. And I think, uh, you know, the, the, the way that I hear it, the folks who were making the movie were like, you know, it's great. You know, she's better than the, the yeah. subject matter, you know, like she legitimized their movie. Yeah. It's like, she's like a real gotcha. actress, you know, <laughs> yeah. in your, <laughs> we're going to make her do some crazy shit. <laughs> yeah. But apparently she was all for it. And then later on in her life, she, uh, you know, wouldn't tell anybody that she had been in it. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, swept it under the rug. She called it that porno that I did. Ah, <laughs> you know, which well, you, I don't, can't, you can't do that. That's just gonna pique yeah, everyone's interest. It, yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, you're drawing more attention. Yeah, to it by it's doing like that. oh, yeah, because well, I think she was embarrassed. Oh, uh, I'm sure. later yeah. on, and, it's just best to never speak of it. Then, you know? yeah. Like, well, would you? Call, okay, so now that we've thrown that out there, I mean, would you consider this a pornographic movie? Not I think in, it's like a fetish movie. More not in the it. usual sense. I would. That sounds yeah. like a better way to like put it. Like how the baby was like, okay. not technically porn, but it was doing something for somebody. You yeah. Know? yeah. Okay. So she's mischaracterized it, maybe. I, well, I think she definitely has. I would not call this. I would not. No, I would not call it pornographic right, yeah. in the way. There's a lot of nudity in it, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's there the is, thing. and it's it, it rides a line on every, I mean, we're talking about fetishes and uh, not only fetishes, but uh, molestation. Mm-hmm. And so that rides that line as well, which not to say that, that has never been a part of a porno because God knows it has, but not for not in this instance. Yeah. And maybe not treated as like seriously, uh, you know, not for like, uh, well, I don't know. Is it an exploitation movie or is it actually trying to say something? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's know. a lot of I mean, the only thing it's trying to say is uh, maybe it's trying to speak on trauma. But no, this is definitely an exploitation movie. Yeah, for okay. sure. If if not, it's uh, it's not just exploiting uh, enjoyable things. Let's put it that way. It's kind of exploiting everything. Yeah, that's I know uh, when. Uh, so this is 1976. At the time that this movie was made, um, you know, I think when they were submitting it to the ratings board or something, somebody said to Matt uh, Simber. You know, it's like, what made you think you could make a movie about that? <laughs> you know, it was just like beyond the pale that you would even uh, mm. do something. Mm. And I guess um, Millie Perkins' sister was really offended because when they were writing the movie, her and her husband um, used moments from their own past. And Millie Perkins's dad had been a sea captain. And so they incorporated this into the script. So her sister is like, this is what you're saying about our father. Right. You know, and yeah. she's like, no, no, it was all just we were, you know, just we're just spitballing. Yeah. Here. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. later on in life, she came around, you know, because it was reappreciated. I think sure. once it came out on video. Mm-hmm. And so now she uh, is proud of it. I wonder if that influenced if that knowledge influenced the making of the movie at any point, like if her sister um, before the movie was made, if that influenced the sister character in this movie, 
Because mm. the sister right. character is kind of having those it's yeah. same feeling. Yeah. He's basically saying a lot of that same right. stuff. Right. Yeah. So I'm wondering if, you if, saw if that, that goes in. And your sister had written this movie, you know, and that, that had a character in it that, you know, is. Right. Yeah. Even if it's not. You, right. You know, even if it's not strictly movie? portraying you, it's just like, well, that's you. That's the sister. Uh-huh. The father's a sea captain. A lot of this seems familiar, yeah, sis. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. If my sister wrote this movie. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, what the. F- <laughs> what, what did we do to deserve this? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so it was a sore point in yeah. the Perkins household sure. and, and in other places in the world after it came out. And now, yeah, I mean, a lot of people haven't heard of it. Uh, I came across it on video at one point because it had that title and that poster. Sure. Um, and uh, what did you think it was before you watched it? I mean, I thought it was going to be a witchcraft movie. I mean, okay. you know, right? Or, or yeah. some kind of, you know, I could tell by the photos on the back of the box that it wasn't going to go, you know, like too mystical or whatever. But sure, but it you seemed thought there'd be like sea and a... And a yeah, witch. and maybe like those 70s, um, you know, kind of suburban paranoid, you know, the, the what were we were talking about, Rosemary's Baby right. came out of that and, you know, like uh, George Romero's Season of the Witch or something like that. It was going to be, you know, like the housewife who's into the dark arts. Okay. You know? mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, that is oh, not this movie. It's not this yeah. movie. Yeah, I know. It's a, it has. I don't know if it's a misleading title. It's it's a cool title, <laughs> and well, I guess it does have relevance. I think it works for the movie. Yeah, like I think that depending on how you view it, yeah, I think you could view her as that. And she is. I mean, she is casting a spell of something because, yeah. uh, if nothing else, for the way people uh, describe her, react to her, like everyone seems to love Millie. Millie's mm-hmm. perfect. Everyone thinks she's got it all going on, mm-hmm. and I don't know how because there is. I've never seen a character portrayed who had, who has definitely does not have it going on. Yeah, like it, I'm very surprised. It feels like she like Wandavision this whole town, right? Like she's <laughs> got them like under a spell yeah, of like because like, she is the queen of this town. Like everybody knows her. Everybody loves her. And everyone like is okay with all her weird. I don't know. I don't want to say quirks because I minorize it. It's yeah. much it, well, more severe I, than right, quirks. The trauma but, that yeah event that led to who she is. Yeah. But is how how does she present though? I guess she comes off as uh, you know this kind of sweet nature at times. But other times she comes off completely unhinged and everyone still just kind of accepts it. Yeah, she's like a sweet woman who has, uh, uh, what do they call it, um, rage blackouts. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it feels like rage blackouts. Yeah. Well, and she's also like an insane alcoholic. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Very much just so. chugging glasses of vodka before chugging. she goes to work. Yeah. yeah. One after the other. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I suppose we should tell people who, who she is and what she's doing. So her name, in the movie, she, her, she's playing a, a, a lady called Molly, and mm-hmm. we're introduced to her um, talking to her nephews, uh, <laughs> Tad and Tripoli, all right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Those are on their the names. beach. <laughs> Couldn't just call him Trip at some point. No, yeah. it's full Tripoli, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Does that does that have anything to do, no? I was gonna say is that anything to do with history and witches and it and those seems names? like yes, but uh, I unfortunately don't know <laughs> to this make that connection. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't either. I, I would tangentially. It feels it's like, like is this a, taken from like a poem about? Yeah, it, that's what sure. it feels like, right? It's yeah, like, right. Um, but she's telling them a story like off the bat about how her father was um, lost at sea. Yes, right. He was a sea captain, and you know he was he went to sea fifteen years ago, and he never came back. It's like, okay, you know, he was a hero. He was a great man. His crew was afraid of him because he had a gun, but he was fair, you know, and all this other stuff. It's like, okay. And then she stares. She's on Venice Beach, I think, right? Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I didn't see the Venice Beach rocks <laughs> yeah. that we've discussed so prominently. Yeah. Is that just a thing like uh, where there's beach and workout equipment? There's dudes, <laughs> muscle-bound dudes. Like, oh, yeah, muscle beach. Out. But like, like Mr. Universe level, like... Muscle ripped, yeah, like insanely like, ripped and roided out. Yeah, right. big dudes, big big tiny presses. banana hammocks everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're wrong. There were burritos in those banana hammocks. <laughs> no, but the hammock was small. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, the hammock was yeah, small. Yeah. Hammock was small. Yeah. Large men in tiny hammocks. Yeah, yeah. Because they, I mean, just close up shots of cr- yeah. crotch of, shots of everything, as many as you could want. And yeah. then, and then slowly they uh, they die. Big, well, okay. Did this happen? No. Oh, okay, but this is this. I like this because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sets up. I'm like, okay, she's looking across and sees these guys. The the close ups of their crotches is her looking at them, right? And like, these men have stuffed to an ungodly degree their tiny banana hammocks. It looks like a straight up, yeah, like Chipotle burrito. It does like a saran yeah. 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 foil wrap yeah. burrito was shoved in there. It's like I'm gonna eat that later. Yeah. yeah. 
And she, so she's fantasizing, right? And we're yes, like, okay, yeah. this is some kind of sexual fantasy that yes. she's having. Mm-hmm. And then it suddenly it devolves or evolves, turns into... bloody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. like one guy doing flips, falls on his, breaks his neck. I'm guessing. Yep. Yeah, there's, there's a guy who's on like the Olympic rings and he hangs himself on the rings. Right, yeah, yeah. That, was pretty, that was my favorite. One. And that he's hung cool. up. Yep, yep. Yeah. And we're like, what the hell? Because and then all of a sudden we snap out of this. The yeah. editing in this movie frequently plays with like a distorted perception yes mm-hmm. very much so so that but i like this at least for the first you know half of the movie because right. you really like don't really get your bearings is this did that actually happen i mean as of now having watched the whole thing i assume that there was that that, that something happened <laughs> like later on you think later maybe uh, maybe uh I don't know. I'm going to say this one's just an imagination. Just yeah, an imagination. she runs off on the beach and wanted, they're fine yeah. when she leaves and the um uh, the carnage as it were seems like it happened like right then. Yeah. yeah. During the day and everything. It doesn't feel like this one didn't feel like it was real. Yeah. She works at a bar called the Boathouse. Yep. Yep. Where there's a colorful uh, proprietor named Long John. Yes, mm-hmm. there's a colorful array of characters in this. Mm-hmm. Like who? Uh, we have Long John. We have Doris. I believe mm-hmm. is her name. Who's got the pills mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> informs us that. Uh, what Daphne should have Daphne has diarrhea Daphne has diarrhea <laughs> well at first there's a lot of theorizing that she missed work because she has menopause there's a lot of menopause talk yeah <laughs> and it's right? like we hear a lot about Daphne for never seeing her we never see Daphne no. right? but we hear we know all about her medical history and her ailments yeah. she keeps calling in sick <laughs> yep. or something like that yeah, yeah. Millie, uh, Molly works there she's a waitress uh, Doris is a waitress mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. we also meet the um, the sister Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Molly's sister, who is a seamstress. Mm-hmm. Oh, Billy, the, Billy Bats at the bar. In a, as well. in a, in a legal seamstress, <laughs> like they're, it's like they're going to shut her down for. <laughs> I think it's. I think the whole story is that it's a business, but she's trying to pawn, uh, sell it off as if it's not a business. So she doesn't have to like put it on the books. Like yeah. she's doing it on the side. She's living on welfare, right. but yeah. also. But if she makes money, yeah. which she explains, she's like, I, they don't pay me enough for me to not be on welfare. Yeah. See, so I whole... thought this was going a whole different direction. I thought she was getting like the clothes she was like repairing from like these people that Molly was killing and then they were like reselling them or whatever. Right. Like they had some sort of like underground thing. No. Uh, it would, no. It would almost, <laughs> no. Also, it would be weird if like she killed people. And then to get rid of the clothes she killed people in, she, the sister yeah, sewed them yeah, into yeah, other yeah. people's clothes something to give like away. That, yeah. yeah, that would. Or have I thought something. maybe at one point because well, okay, well we'll get there. There's, <laughs> there's a there's a, a ring that becomes a piece of evidence, mm-hmm. but um, so how do we get into this? There's um, Molly. There's talk about um, football players. Right, right. They're she watching the a football, football. game. Watching, okay. Yes. And yep. she, yes. She idolizes these football players, two in particular. She knows somehow where they stay. You know, this is dialogue mm-hmm. that you know. It's like she's got the hookup in town or something. Right. Um. And something. She has a conversation with uh, her sister, and I think this is where it like starts to like. We're like, okay, the this story, is where we chip away at the uh, who's telling the truth. Yeah. At this the story point. about. They're dad, dad the sailor yes yeah because the sister's like he was an awful bastard you know right and molly's very protective of dad he was a great you know father and he blah, never blah, touched blah. you and all that stuff did they even say that was that implied right there uh molly said it he never touched you once oh, okay but she, we're supposed to uh, it, i i think i took it as she meant like phys- like hit her or yeah. something like that mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's what yeah, Molly said because I think the sister is claiming that that he beat her and he was a bastard and he drank too much and all that and Molly says no he didn't touch you once like she's telling the good side of it and she's maybe the sister's telling the re- we don't know is kind of the point in yeah. this part mm-hmm. does it have a flashback at that point we start to get these flashbacks about like the um, Molly is Molly's a younger childhood child. yes and it goes like I mean this is one of those movies that you know I guess you, you probably should put a warning label if you're gonna watch this I mean it's yeah it's sleazy it is yeah. a sleazy movie I feel like I need a shower yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> now remember that for the end of the episode <laughs> uh, it's uh, yeah I mean it it can be I get it it, it can yeah. be a tough watch it, for probably a lot well, of people. if they did it once that that's one thing but they keep going back to this and I'm like I got it the first time yeah. I don't need to keep seeing it <laughs> Yeah, not that. Yeah, I mean, we 
Yeah, and we get the message. So I, I thought it kept expanding. I guess. Okay, but know. I I don't need that level of detail. Mm, okay. From the first scene, I, like, you get the I, I I get I know what's happening here. Yeah. I don't need we, to see every explicit version of no, this abuse. I don't, you know, like we could even cut out after the uh, interaction in the closet where yeah. she comes home and opens the. closet. I don't even think you needed that one. I, I think don't, the first one with the boat was enough. I mean, it, yes, but even if you were to go farther, like that is like okay. I have no questions right. as to what's going on here. Well, I guess for, I think about like this in in spoilers for Split, but in Split, <laughs> like when they make that same reveal, mm. um, it they do it once. Yeah. Don't keep going back to it. You got it from the one time in Split, yeah. you know. And I guess for the folks, you know, if you haven't seen this movie, mm -hmm. the, 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 the the several scenes that we see, one of them is, you know, she's talking about dad was a shipbuilder and we see dad building, he builds model ships, yes. right? Mm -hmm. This is supposedly the objective reality mm -hmm. of what actually happened in her childhood. Okay, yeah. Um, there's another time when, um, yeah, she comes home and she finds him like naked, curled up. I assume drunk in the corner of a closet as she's yes. going in there yeah. to put something in. And he's um, like laughing when she opens giddy. the door. Yeah. It's, yeah. Because it was one of those. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a later one where I think it's almost like he is the, the storm, right? Because she keeps on making all. I, get, I think that's what what's happening here. It's like she's taken all this stuff and repressed it, right? And Definitely. has turned it into this big sea analogy, you know? We we used to go to sea all the time, which becomes the right, euphemism yep. for, you know, he raped her mm -hmm. all yep. the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, the way they play with the sound effects in some of yeah. those scenes, because mm -hmm. when he bashes the television, you know, uh, it sounds like a waves are crashing and all this other stuff. Um, and then, uh, eventually we find out, and I mean, I guess we'll, we'll explain it now. It saved for the end of the movie that, uh, while he was raping her, he had a heart attack and died like on her. What about, yes. what's the most traumatic day in the world? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But yeah. And so this support, uh, uh, you know, we find. I was traumatized learn. by the food in the mouth. Oh yeah, yeah. that was yeah. the big. So yeah. much open mouth chewing so, and food yeah, falling out of the mouth. Oh, in God. the clown. The clown. Oh, the clown. Yeah, there's a I would have forgot the clown. <laughs> clown TV show that she watches? Is yeah. that real or is that part it's of It's supposed to be like Bozo the Clown or something like that. It looks but like her dad. It is her dad. Is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's her dad. And yeah. uh, we should say, okay, so the, the actor playing her dad is uh, Robert uh, Jeff, I think is how you pronounce his name. And uh, you will have seen him as uh, he was in The Fog. He was on, yeah. the, on the boat. Mm -hmm. He was Nancy, uh, not... Um, I was going to say Nancy Lewis, not Nancy Lewis. Uh, Janet Lee's Jen, husband, yeah. or, uh, w uh, husband in that movie. Um, and I guess he was the guy in They Live who spots Roddy Piper, like looking at him with gotcha. the, I think he's the oh, first. Okay. You know. uh, so he had done some John Carpenter stuff. Uh, the uh, girl who plays young Molly is um, George Buck Flowers' daughter. Oh, Jesus. Great, great movie to bring your... Wow, yeah. Maybe wonder, don't take your kids I wonder to work sometimes. At what point, yeah. not even during filming, but later in life, she realized what movie she was right. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. always curious. We never looked up to see a Vernica or whatever. Her oh, name yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. She's only credited with her first name. George Buck Flower, right, is yeah. also in this movie. He's in this movie. He's a cop. Yeah, not a with drunk a, or a homeless man. For right? Yeah, so I had weird. a hard time identifying yeah, him in same. this movie. I'm just like, <laughs> until he said, until I could hear the uh, the cadence in his voice, I was yeah. like, oh, that's that's George. Right. Yeah. But up until that point, I was just like, oh, shit. There he is. Yeah, because he, he cleans up he cleans up pretty good. Yeah, and he's young. I mean, he's younger in this. 1970, what, six, you said? Mm. Yeah. So he's definitely younger. Before he got into his career of playing bums yep. uh, or whatever, but I'm, and before John Carpenter, but there's also the Dean Cundy connection here that we're- Yeah. Um, That's going to be my retirement plan. Let's see if I can- Gross myself up and just play bums in movies. There you like go. Just a f yeah, right. Yeah, and bum. then we can do like a bum Avengers type movie where all the like character actors that play bums can be right. join up and form. Yeah, like, yeah. If but they can do it with vampires, I mean, we if can you do it with bums. corner, you know, you're like the guy that they think of when they're like, we need a bum for this movie. Yeah. Right. It's, gonna be, it's gonna be Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll, take that. Yeah. I'll I'll live my life in mm -hmm. my fancy cars and big houses and just be a yeah. bum in movies. Yeah. Um. 
George Buckflower was also the casting director on this. Movie. He was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it feels like a, it's this is an independent, you know, movie where it's like, yep. you know, movie oh, people yeah. got together and kind of did this thing on the side. Did anybody release something. this? Like who? Aquarius. Ah, uh, yep. Films definitely independent back then. Um. Oh, and also the other uh, tie-in, then George Buck Flowers in this, he's one of the cops. The other cop is uh, Robert Kennedy, and uh, the same year that this came out, both George Buck Flower and Robert Kennedy were in Ilsa, She-Wolf <laughs> of the SS, one of the most notorious sleazy yeah, yes. exploitation movies. Yes, it is. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, he was the general, the other cop. I've blocked it all out. <laughs> he asks her to, to pee on him. Oh! You remember that? No. Okay, blocked it All out. gone. All gone. I remember Bring one, it scene, one scene specifically, and that's it. Just a lot of uh, nudity and blood and, and Nazis in ways that yeah. I didn't like. We I'm not did. saying there are ways in which I like all those three together, <laughs> but I'm just saying that all three of them together was not good. Uh, uh, we did an episode on that movie way long, many years ago, that yes. you can go back through the archive and find. Okay, so... Um, Anyway, she's uh, obsessed. Is there a place for sexy Nazis? That's all I'm at. No, I'm, sorry. I'm sure kidding. that's a tab on Pornhub, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. You know what? You're probably right. They have to have, like, it, scrubbed. Yeah, well, I, I think they do. Yeah. I feel well, like I mean, you porn know websites are kind of like anything goes for yeah. the most part. So. I, th- well, I think some have some standards. Well, now they got uh, whatever, like, because uh, it was a MasterCard and Visa. This is off. Okay. Oh, anyway, oh, whoa. They, I don't even know where we're going. Yeah, they pulled their, uh, like, you can't. You oh, know, yeah. okay. Unless you pull this stuff off. Or, yeah. Anyway, uh, um, it was on the news. I vaguely remember okay. what you, yes, yeah. what you were saying, yes. Anyway, this scene with uh, her sister, right, where she's uh, remembering this. uh, I don't know if if she's even remembering it, but the movie cuts to well, she goes. I I think she's experiencing it, not remembering it. Okay, we we're getting it. Yeah, so maybe we're getting like the 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 impact of the emotion. I think so. Um, Even if she's blocking it out, right and. She goes and gets a drink. I, I clocked that, and she had like three shots because she's got to go to work, right? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And while she's taking a drink, the movie cuts to a hotel room, mm-hmm. and yes. where she is seducing these two football players. But it's been like slowed down just a little bit, and there's yeah. some sort of effect on it where their voice kind of like echoes and reverberates like they're underwater. Yeah. Yeah. It's an it's odd. Weird odd twist it's interesting Mm -hmm. how did you interpret that style i guess when because i know when i first saw it i'm like this is a dream this is a fantasy scene i thought it was like some sort of spell or magical capability or something especially since we're working a witch is in the title so that's very true yeah i don't know i thought it it felt uh, i mean it did felt dreamlike um and i didn't think it was going to go on for so long so i was like what is the longer it went on like okay this is really going through a lot this is definitely really happening yeah even with this it still seems heightened obviously because Mm of the the voices and the slowed down and everything yeah well what happens she ties them they to get the high bed. it could also be because they all got high yeah yeah and so we're just yeah. like it just from like it's how when, you show people are drugged out yeah uh, yeah it's like old school when you get shot in the, 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 the neck with a dart it's like you're, you're crazy man yeah yeah <laughs> i like totally. you but you're crazy yeah it's that it does have that yeah she yeah. ties them up on the bed everybody stoned them, right one yeah one hand one hand and then they get tied together hand yep. to hand and then and she saws she it She does off. all their feet except <laughs> one, and the one guy's. Yeah. And then Quentin Tarantino's favorite scene in this movie comes up, because this guy's, like, feeling up her boobs with his foot. Yeah. Does it matter what if it's a male foot? What can you do with one foot? free hand? For Quentin uh, Tarantino, well, I, I wonder? Uh, yeah, maybe. As long mm-hmm. as there's a woman. This is somebody's I fetish, uh, I somebody, suppose. This is for somebody. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, in the movie, I don't know if they were intending it that way, or if it was just mm-hmm. like, what can you mm-hmm. do with one free hand? But we do get, I think, a shot of... Yep. Uh, it's an extended shot. Yeah. It was a long shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah. then she's like grabs his Achilles tendon like really hard, apparently. I guess she has super strength. I guess so, because she breaks a dude's hand later yeah. just by squeezing it. So she, I uh, guess, has super strength. Never explained. Kind no. of annoying that that's never explained. And you think she's going to, like, break his foot or rip his tendon out? That's what I was hoping for, especially because he's a football player, ruin yeah. his life, right? Right, and he was worried about it earlier. He's like, that's my tendon, yeah, dude. <laughs> and then she just cuts his dick off instead. Yeah, saws it off. With a little razor blade. With a little razor blade. And Why? She, she's like, this Don't is going to take forever. Mm-hmm. She saws off his balls. Mm-hmm. Well... I- yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is uh, like, I don't know, because the way that they shoot it, um, 
you know, it's one of those, it, it made an impression. I think that was the moment when I first saw it that I'm like, okay. Right. Uh, this is uh, uh, yeah. the kind of movie that we're in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you're still in the first act. I think this is the hook. Right. And I'm like, okay, you got me. Because <laughs> it has that kind Don't of. Don't worry. Uh, we may have lost some. <laughs> we'll get them with the balls coming off. <laughs> this is our hook. Yeah. Um, is it graphic? I mean, I think it, it like, you don't actually you don't see, see it. No, but the, the back and forth and the knowing, obviously your mind and can do so many more things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the blood, they there do have squirts. blood squirting onto her, you know, leg, yeah. leg mm-hmm. or something like that. Onto her like, doily Jesus patch jeans. Christ. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the <laughs> 70s fashion is out of control it's, in this movie. Yeah, not good. But it's really distracting when she's like trying to seduce them and she's wearing <laughs> jeans that yeah, literally have like doilies applique on the ass. Yep. Yeah. That's so weird. And like all the jackets she wears have like weirdly wholesome like patches on the back like butterflies and rainbows and shit and it's mm. like okay I get it, it was the 70s and that was the style but it's just so at odds with her personality. It's weird. Well it's good. Yeah because right because she seems to be very anti like hippie. It's like hippie she clothes was just, or something like that. She had a panic but... attack when she thought she'd have to be a hippie because she would have to wear glasses. Yeah. yeah. Weird thoughts. Yeah. yeah. I have to wear glasses. Yeah. Yeah. How do you two glasses wearing people feel about that? <laughs> I can't, well, I can't see, speak I to how we offensive all, that was. Right. We. I think but we all have things to be offended about like <laughs> yes. the way they think about tattoos in yep. this movie oh, the yeah. way they think about glasses in this movie <laughs> we should all be pissed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it's something. It's a uh, well. I mean, yeah, yeah, a relic of its of its day. Yes. Mm-hmm. When they would go all the way on everything uh, without holding back, um, it seems like uh, that scene cuts back to her drinking. Yes. Um, with her sister. Right. Yeah. And so then you're like, was this a fantasy? Right. Did this actually happen? Is she remembering something? Right. She goes to work. Yeah. Uh, that night, and Long John's like you're three hours late, you know, which I suppose should be a clue that some, you know, the time has passed. And then uh, I think that's when she meets the movie star Billy Billy Bo- Bats. Billy Bats. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, he's in the bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which he's going to come back later. Mm-hmm. And um, then she spends the night with uh, Long John, and wakes up the night, and it's, it's a very casual like um, relationship that they have. Yeah. Why is he not a target for emasculation? Don't know. Maybe she feels like he's already emasculated. She she sure, I'll go, go with that. I got but nothing. Because she doesn't obviously seem to feel that he is in a position that is very masculine, whatever mm-hmm. he's doing or whatever his him as a person. She doesn't feel that way about him. Not like she does. The I mean, the other ones have status. TV, TV is the thing as well because he, the, he's not on TV, but they are the football players, the actor, and everything. And God damn it, she loves to watch television, as she'll yeah. tell you in this movie. Yeah. So she's sort. She has this fascination with it of uh, watching them, uh, being on it. I think she thinks anything that comes from there is rather beautiful. Yeah. She uses she's beautiful always, way too much. Well, she's she, always talking about these ble- beautiful men. Yes. But the, the boat, he made the most beautiful ships. Everything yeah. was, that was the yeah. only adjective she used for everything. Yeah. So if they call something beautiful, obviously it's going to be horrendous. Yep. Yeah. And we also have the the sense that she doesn't necessarily remember that she's killed these people. Because we find out that she did because it's on the news the next right. morning that yeah. they're dead. You know, yeah, the, further evidence later. Yeah. But yeah, she does find out the next morning and she is, uh, well, no, no. Then she, she is then worried about Tad and Tripoli because boy, those boys love those football players. Yeah. She's got to console. So they're them. also like, uh, safe from her murderous rampage. It they seems are, like. but she is also filling their heads with some just not true shit. Right. And some, some odd thoughts as far as it goes or especially when she's describing their grandfather and everything like that even god she talks about god a few times and even then it feels like somebody who is uh spewing propaganda Mm -hmm. to say nothing else she's like uh she sees there's like a a, an objective objectification of like some kind of perfection that tv like cements right that's what going on because a number of times there's these ironic lines i think the, the detectives at some point throw out to one character you know it's like turn on your tv and find out what's happening in the real world right and she right. says something to the effect of like you know what was it it's it's on television it must be true right i right. saw it on television it must be true it has to be true yeah yeah that is her thoughts on it and she's so is she disappointed with these people when she meets them in real life and the perfection is just wiped away 
I don't know, or if she has to have that perfection in some way, right. or, or she wants to ruin that perfection yeah, in some yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Because it does seem like, I mean, obviously she just wants to cut these guys' balls off. She right, to, yeah. You know, right. <laughs> make them less threatening, less men, yeah. you know, or something. Yeah, obviously, and that relates back to, obviously, the trauma she experienced. Yeah, but we, younger. like I said, the movie is doling this out, so you kind of, you know, get mm-hmm. like a larger view of this, yes. but uh, as it goes... Um, she eventually is uh, invited to this party, I guess, at this... Uh, um, to Billy Bat's party. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in the in the hills. I suppose before that, we should say she becomes fascinated with uh, a guy in a, like, a Gillette commercial mm-hmm. or oh, something. Yeah. Another, yeah, another actor on TV, yes. McPeak. McPeak! Um, yes, and great name. She has this, uh, you know, these flights of fantasy where, uh, you know, it's a guy in a shower and like, dude, something about a close shave. And, you know, mm-hmm. the girl comes up next to him. She has like a moral problem with this. Like they don't even know the each na- other. Yeah. Do you think <laughs> he even knows her name? <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you think he asked before they did this? Like they're naked on television. But then he she reminds starts- me of what's her name from Pi. She's like, I'm going to be on tell or from Requiem for a Dream. Oh, right. I'll yeah. be yeah. on television. Yeah. 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 She's she, obsessed she's with a, television. Yeah. yeah. So much, but like she, he starts talking to her through the television. Yeah. Like, I mean, right. so you're like, okay, this lady is warped. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. I mean, she's a, a very broken person. Yes. Uh, sympathetic. Mm, I mean, to a degree. Yeah. To a degree. Well, yeah. Considering, I mean, yeah, she would, anybody who goes to that type of trauma. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially the way she acts. I don't feel like she has full control of most of what she does okay yeah i mean i guess that's how i take it too it's like you know she's i mean very mentally disturbed yeah like you want her i want her to get dangerous yes very dangerous uh to be at large in society um so she goes to this party and the uh billy billy Mm bats does try to seduce her because he's kind of this like slimy oh this is like a 70s party where they have the pool indoors oh yeah yeah yeah. i mean it's pool in the house but fun yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) everybody's naked in the pool but everybody outside of the pool is just kind of chilling right just kind of hanging yep it was like the hugh hefner's place or something yeah um we had questions as to if you had one of these pools in the 70s was there, there a lot of indoor mold in these places because of the moisture. Yeah. That Listen, feels. Listener, if you know this for personal experience, please tell us about yeah. it. Yeah. But that feels like a, that would be a scene from um, uh, Boogie Nights where <laughs> <laughs> the next morning after yeah. one event at their house that they're in, right. somebody's just cleaning the fucking molds back again. And right. like one character would have a problem with it. It feels <laughs> like. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, God damn. Well, I'm pretty sure one of them said, like, oh, there's cum in the pool again. God right. damn it. <laughs> like stuff like that. And you know that's a problem there as well. People are straight up diving into this pool and it's, sp- it's splashing all yeah. over inside. Yeah. And it, and there's wood paneling in the same room with his pool. Yeah. Terrible idea. Yeah. So you yeah. know there's pool. Yeah. The 70s when things just weren't right on so many levels. Well, we uh, just didn't give a fuck about anything, apparently. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think we knew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we knew at all. <laughs> um, but uh, so she does squirrel herself off into a bedroom with this guy. Mm. Um, again, I was saying it's a casual thing with her and Long John because Long John's there. Right. Uh, and, you know, they're having uh, well, they're sleeping together. I don't know if it's an affair, but. Like, and they, he lives like in the bar, like they fold down a bed and they're like, yeah, the bar like is, back room, yeah. <laughs> was it the back room? I, I was like, so. is it just the bar? I mean, maybe I, I'm trying to figure out what, what point he said, there's another bar over there. Oh, that, no, I mean, uh, uh Are the, you talking about in long the boathouse, long, long John oh, yeah, just lives yeah. in the bar. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah this I guy mean, has like a Hollywood, uh, you know, yeah. Or he's in Malibu. Sorry. But long, okay, but Long John had the fish tanks built into the wall, which was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you can watch people on the other side and everything. Yeah. 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 That's Very another nautical. thing where it's just like, this is a load bearing wall. Let's put a fish tank right <laughs> yeah. in the middle. Of that's definitely yes. the 70s. And we can sit on our waterbed and just watch them. <laughs> yeah. That's what it needed. <laughs> yeah. needed a waterbed. It needed bed. a waterbed. How, how would the, this movie that is so about water and the ocean not have a fucking waterbed? Right. Bed? I know. How? Yeah. When were water Like, beds? I know they're kind Imagine. of a pain in the ass, but like, <laughs> they were, were they? definitely available in 76. They had to have been. Right in seventy six, oh, they had to have been. Yeah, yeah, when, the history of the waterbed. What if you, <laughs> you imagine having a waterbed on a boat? Like uh, if you lived on a boat, you had a ocean. waterbed, just double, double waterbed. Yeah. Oh my god, that you'd never be nauseating. <laughs> yeah, you'd never be still. <laughs> oh no. Um, but uh, so this guy does come on to her. Uh, Nineteen sixty eight. It was invented. Oh, so uh, yeah, okay. there you so, go. Yep, there Missed go. opportunity. Um, she seems to be uh, into the seduction, and you're like, "What is going on 
with this woman. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's like she does plan to uh, attack him. I would believe so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What we know at this point. But he gets violent with her. She ends up breaking his ha- a couple of bones in his hand. Right, because they're making out and he she bites him. Well, she she like says because he's you know basically says that he wants to sleep with her. Right, and she what did she say? I don't think you could handle. I it. think you'll be too gentle with yes, me. Mm-hmm. That's it. And he's like, I doubt it. And then she bites him. Yeah. Then he slaps her. Yeah. Then she attacks him and you know, breaks his hand. Yeah. And so I mean, basically, the way this scene culminates is, uh they get into a fight by the door. It's like, she's going to attack and kill this guy. The door opens. Yeah. Cause she almost goes demonic at a yeah. certain point. I thought, cause her oh, voice changes, she said, yeah, changes yeah, yeah. again. Cause he slaps her behind the bed and then there's a change and her voice sounds. I thought this is where we were going to get like, witch. Like, I thought there was going to be a change here. Oh, wow. Because it, it, well, it sounded like it. And the way they shot her yeah, I thought talking so too. below the bed. Yep. I like, thought that's for a sure. reveal yes. shot. Okay, there's the cundy of it no, all. No, I thought it for sure, too. Especially because, like, when her hair started to poke up, it was all, like, disheveled. And yeah. I was like, this is, she's going to be, like, transformed into a witch. Yeah, I thought we were getting nope. eyes. I thought we would get the cover of this. Interesting yeah. that you guys were, like... Like seriously expecting this to be a supernatural horror movie at this point. I mean, in maybe the movie. at some point. I, like, mean, I mean, given I the title, know. yeah. And but, I guess you know, with movies, we've seen stuff where it is yeah, like we're right. lulling you into. Callum, a false sense we of, watched the Manitou on this show. Yeah, the, well, yeah. So we anything's possible, right? Any, <laughs> yeah, that's what we got to know about the freak show. Anything's possible. Yeah. We could end up anywhere. So yeah, yeah. As, well, especially because they did the voice changing part in yep. this scene. I was and convinced. She was like. It would make sense that the mask would literally slip when she was like really angry and upset. Right. Like, that would it made sense for it to happen at that time. Yes. And the yeah. way she attacked him afterwards. Yes. Right. Oh, and he has like the portrait. It's like the picture of Venus. Uh mm-hmm. is it the Venus de Milo. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the one. Mm-hmm. But he, he tells Can you tell story. us that story, Colin? Well, yeah. he basically oh tells her God, that, that. Yeah, what, it, where'd Venus part. come from? <laughs> Do you remember his little spiel on Who's Venus's father supposed to be? Uh, was it Poseidon? Uh, uh, not Zeus. Uh, no, not Zeus. Not Poseidon. There's a god who uh, gets his balls cut off and thrown into the ocean, and that's how Venus is conceived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. But he tells it in far better. He tells <laughs> it in like two sentences and so cavalierly. And it's then, great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's wonderful. And that that is the witch who came from the sea. I yeah. guess that's where the movie gets its title because you're supposed to see Molly as like an analog to right. Venus, I suppose. Right. Um. <laughs> But the way the scene ends, she ends up falling out into the where all the revelers are. Yes. And so it looks to them like he attacked her. Yes. And so wisely, I don't know, he like kind of looks up and scans the room, reads the temperature and locks himself in the bedroom. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit, there's no way I'm going to be able to explain this. Uh, yeah. And it's also <laughs> probably like it's not the first time this has happened. Close. Yeah. Yeah. And she is rescued by McPeak. Who oh, happens yeah. to be there because I guess these actors hang out. Right. And, you aren't know. you on TV? First thing aren't, she says. Yeah, aren't you in a commercial or something like that? Or, You're a commercial. Yes. That's yeah. A, yeah. And, and their love affair starts. Right. Weird? All of it's weird, Colin. <laughs> Every single moment of it is yep. weird. Yep. So part of the chorus at this point. I don't think this movie had a normal moment. I think everything about it was weird. Really? Yes. I mean, I guess you yes. It's like it's well. I don't even know if you can say like the people are definitely not. Well, I don't. Know, she's not normal. Are the people? And around she's her? in every scene. So <laughs> and the people around her are also yeah. not. No, there is not a, a non weird scene in this movie. Yeah. I will agree with that because, because even she's the, in most of them and she makes them weird. Or the people, the characters themselves are also weird because they're not. It doesn't feel like they're in. Uh, like it's like they're own under worlds. that spell. It's like they're under a spell. Yeah. They're in their own her. world. Yeah. Oh, because don't. they believe that she. You're saying because she believe they. They seem to see her as this pure and innocent yes. girl. Or I think uh, the the sister asks Long John at one point. You know, you think she's perfect, does don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, Yeah, I do. What's wrong with that? You know. Yeah. yeah. And the whole time the sister's like, uh, she killed people. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the sister seems to be going through a little bit of denial there for a while because, uh, you know, I don't know if she knows because she's I think at that point she's like, I'm not saying she killed anyone. Or I'm not saying she did it, but I'm saying <laughs> she might have done it you know, uh, because yeah. the cops end up going to uh, the sister. Yeah. Because, this is where they're doing a shakedown. Yeah. Because they found the patterns. Yes. And they've tracked the fabric mm-hmm. back to her. And yes. I don't know. I thought that the, the lady who was playing the sister did like a pretty good job. You know, like uh, 
Having a nervous breakdown? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah she I did. believe so because she was uh, all over the place. You can't, I can't, you can't talk to all my clients who run them off. I can't leave the children outside. They're playing in the streets. Like she's, yeah, she's shaking all. She mm-hmm. needs a drink. Yeah, which eventually she goes to her. Maybe yes. that was the second thing, but it's like she, you can kind of see it dawning on her. There was that one scene, I think, you know, where, oh no, you know, like, what do you know yeah. about football? Nothing or like something. Yeah. What was it? It was like, oh no, oh no. Oh no! You know, yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah, better yeah. performed than that, but it was like you could see it dawning on her yeah. that, like, oh shit, Molly might <laughs> might have yeah. done this because they have uh, her clothes. Um, she sleeps with McPeak. She does, uh, and scares off his uh, girlfriend. Right, mm-hmm. blonde. Like, yes. Who later shows up shooting at his car the next day. Yeah. Sure. Why not? She was not appreciative of it because uh, Molly was very forward in front of her yep. to McPeak. She's like, she asked her, do you love him? And she just laughed. She's like, well, what do you, gee, what do you mean? And then she's like, because I do. Once again, not I a normal want him. scene. No, not it's a normal not. Scene. But it's, yeah. it's very direct at him and he's okay with it. And then she's caught literally in between them. And the next time we see her. But I guess, you know, you say it's not a normal scene and I agree. Yeah. But you're looking at, like, are the people giving, like, a normal person's reaction to that, which is basically, like, embarrassed, awkward. You know, it just it's an awkward social moment because there's... It's this- also just, like, we hard cut to her shooting at a car, and we're like, wait, you have to take a second to be like, wait, who is this lady again, and mm. where are we? You have to, like... Oh. This, this movie is constantly... Reac- you're constantly reacclimating to where you're at and who you're with, because it, the, the editing and the cuts are really weird in spots. Some mm. of them it feels like it's doing intentionally, mm-hmm. like, you yeah. know, Sean was saying, right. where it would show you, like, a scene of sex abuse, and then cut to naked people jumping into a pool. Yeah. Right. You know? Um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Other yeah. scenes seem... You know, they kind of have that television quality of like, here's the dun 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 oh, like, and, look and on using, somebody's face. Yes, and using literally <laughs> the same music for right. most of those TV shows. And other ones that just kind of cut abruptly into things. And then we already know that it's played games with time, you know, by yep. cutting a future event into a past event, you know. Yeah. To kind of destroy you to I guess put you out of sorts, you know, where, where Molly is or it, whatever. It worked because I was wondering about a timeline, especially when the football players were killed versus when they were found versus when they were mentioned. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it does. It messes with time in this. So yeah, because how did she because there was a, a later when um well I mean I guess with the where we're coming to is with Mick Peak. Uh really quickly mm-hmm. for those of you who are interested, Roberta Collins, who played the uh jilted girlfriend in this is also for a star of many uh, women in prison movies uh. like Chain Heat and uh she was in the hard bodies movies and <laughs> nice. uh, a genre we have not really <laughs> delved into. I'm women sure in we prison. Will. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no women in prison movies. Um she in big, big big bird cage or big doll house. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, so uh, McPeak uh, ends up getting a visit from Molly. Um, this is after no, the first time you're talking about. Well, the f- or after because then we never see them get together. We see the aftermath the day after, yeah. And she, her, calling him back. But there's also uh, a tattooing experience with Jack Dracula. Part. With Jack Dracula, right. <laughs> Bravo. The kids, earlier on in the movie, they, Molly was walking with the kids, and they walked by a tattoo shop called Jack Dracula's, which yep. when the guy, when they show him, when they show Jack, it's definitely his name. Yep. Yeah. No, no doubt about no it. No doubt about it. Tattoo on the face and mm-hmm. all this, and a very sinister looking fellow. Yes. And he would goes, look coolish even without, without the tattoos. It's just his bone structure and his, eye, his and eyes. His eyes got some, out. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got one that kind of works on its own a little bit, yeah. and the other one's very wide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That guy's not an actor. He's somebody that uh, he Matt, was found. Uh, no, he, he's Jack <laughs> Dracula. Yeah. Uh, they, I'm they, sure it's a real tattoo shop, but that's yep. all. They just found that. <laughs> no, as I'll as believe that to the day I die. It's like they found Jack Dracula. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Which so, is. Not as good as Mike Dracula from whatever the movie was. <laughs> oh, yeah. What and the whole Dracula family. Mike Dracula. Oh, my oh God, that was, was uh, that? Zoltan, the Zoltan. Hound yes. of Dracula, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dracula's dog. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah my Dracula's God. dog. Yeah, Mike Dracula. Yeah, yeah it's Mike Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Dracula's like their distant cousin <laughs> yeah. who lives in California. And is yeah. way cooler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He throws good parties. Yeah. But she gets a tattoo after telling us that she doesn't approve of tattoos. And she mm-hmm. gets a tattoo because she sees this one of a mermaid. And she seems to keep uh, comparing herself to the little mermaid, yeah. right, uh-huh. in the dialogue. And later we find out that that tattoo, which she puts on her stomach, 
is like her dad's tattoo. Well, yes. you don't find that out to the end. You're like, oh my god. Ew. So she goes over to um, uh, Long John's house to spend the night or to talk, right? And this is, I think, like all the the the, the suspicions are building up here because the detectives are closing in. A uh, sister is beginning to suspect that Molly actually is uh, the killer. Yep. Uh, Long John is getting the idea that like Molly has uh, trauma in her past, right? Because she can't remember the first time that she ever got screwed. He says, because right? It's been happening her entire life. Right. Yeah. She can't remember when it started, yeah. you know? Uh, and so, um, and he seems like a, sympathetic to her. Like, I actually do believe that guy loves her. They have a right. casual yeah. relationship, but it's like, he actually does like care deeply about yeah, it. It would seem right. so. Um, and so she must, we don't see it. Right. But she must like go to sleep with him. Sneak, sneak out in the middle of the night and goes over to uh, McPeak's. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then in the morning when McPeak wakes up, he goes, he should shave. And this is what she's obsessed about because this is the moment that it actually crystallizes. Like this is the guy. Only I'm seeing it now in real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's shaving himself with a razor, and that just that whole thing coming together in her mind must have been some sort of like explosion. Yeah, right. because, yeah. I mean, at that point, and so obviously, uh, uh, she, I mean, she wants to shave him as well. So she begins, and he lets her because he's guiding her, and then. As you know, what's going to happen, that razor makes its way to his throat and, mm -hmm. and to his throat, down his chest, mm -hmm. and then more song. Yep. <laughs> in in a shot in a way with a, because the mirror in the bathroom is pretty big and I think on the edges goes floor length and we're getting a, a good profile shot of this going on and it's not, it's not cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess this is a thing that made the British censors go, I, you know, like, right. okay, yeah, this right. is too much. And I mean, again, like we said, we're not getting close up shots of no, anything no, 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 actually no. happening. A lot of this is, uh, it's, it's uh, almost all implied. Yeah. But, yeah. but it's doing a good job of implying but it. Man, it I, yeah. Cause I don't know. It's either this or uh, I spin on your grave as far as castration mm. scenes go mm. for me. I like teeth. Teeth, you actually see it happen. Aww. Yeah. A lot. More than once in that what movie. About, yeah. What about mm -hmm. uh, par uh, Hostile Part 2? And uh, hard, ca hard Candy. Yeah, well, Hard oh, Candy yeah. had like the whole operation. Extended yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I forgot about that. Stay know. tuned. We'll get there eventually, yeah. right? I don't know if I'm going to bring I Spit on Your Grave, but... Uh, no, be, I'm be, good. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. I'm good on it. Yeah. That's a horror movie. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a horror movie, too. Anyway, so um, <laughs> we get to... Because that's what I was like. Is this a psychological drama or a horror movie? I'm mm -hmm. like... Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... And we get to a scene then where it seems like, uh, oh, yeah, well, she wakes up at Long John's place. Oh, yeah. In bed. Bloody. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what in the holy hell have you done? And she says that she tried to cut off the tattoo. Yeah. And it's her blood. And then we kind of get the idea that, like, you know, she actually, and she eventually does admit to killing those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, McPeak and the other ones and others throughout the years. Right, because mm -hmm. he's like, "How many have been on your crew, Molly?" Because that's how she sees it. They were right. They were right. on her. Yeah, she was the captain of that ship. <laughs> yeah, and she keeps having these weird flashbacks to like her strung up on like a mast and like bodies cut in half on a yeah. boat. Yeah, what's that? It yeah, seems like a very, it. very past event because it seems like she's. I think that's the, that's the fantasy event, right? That's some, that's what she's like. The story she's telling in her head to herself because she is on. But she, it seems like that one always comes in and it's like, it's Very done in staticky. a way that's like, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be like painful. Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. is the, that is like the trauma, right? right. But in her trauma, cause she's tied to a mast and then she's surrounded by the bodies of all these guys. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, is that implies that she doesn't remember killing them. She's just always surrounded by, you know, this blood and death and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause they always do seem to cut that into the movie at right. like moments yeah. when she's under explicit psychological stress. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then it's a happy ending for her at the end. I think that's how you're supposed to read it. I would, I would think so. Um, they take it upon themselves. Well, um, I'm trying to remember if we're forgetting a scene or two here, but it doesn't seem like it. Like once she wakes up, 
at um, you know at Long John's place, and she's got the blood on her. It seems I mean, like the confession comes there, right? Yeah, right. Because they're there. The kids do come back, which is weird. Very mm-hmm. weird. Okay, so this whole so right. So they're like the the kids overhear a conversation. I think between Long John and the sister. Yeah. Right. Because they're at the sister's house, their mom's house, and. She's like, she killed those guys. Like it's the, they know it's her. The cops, right. if they find her, don't send her back here. Cause I'll hit her over the head with a bottle. Just tell her to run, <laughs> yeah. you know? Uh, and I think long John has also come around to this. So like she's, you know, uh, capable of yes. it at least. And so Doris comes over with Daphne's pills. Yep. Gotta have the pills. And they start, I think they decide, like... They all decide. Yeah. It's like a, a, a shared, uh, like, a thing going on. Like a shared fever dream of some sort. Or it's, uh, I don't know, it's like, um, just between the three of them, they all decide that uh, this is the moment. Right. They all gotta be in some state of shock. Is she, um, is she aware of it? Because she's like, I have to take more pills, don't I? And he's like, yeah, you do. But does she know what... The end result. Did she know that she's going to die if she does it? I have no idea. I can't. I don't yeah. know. You I know? don't. I, I don't. It's not. I, I don't think it's death at that point. I don't think that matters. I think it's quiet. I, I silence. It is. It is not being. I mean, it's the end of the movie. It's it's being on that raft, but not being. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, in, is she aware that she is telling them to kill her? I don't. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I don't. The, think her so goal is. I don't think her goal is to die. I think her goal is to, um, like I said, she's looking for the quiet. I think at this point, or the yeah. peace, or something. I mean, uh, like I said, because where she ends up. So no, not necessarily. I mean, she's got to know it at some level. Like yeah, deep okay. down, even not unconsciously, she probably knows it. But okay, because that's where you say when they were all get together and kind of have this. I, I Long John and Doris, this shared of, agreement and understanding yeah, they of what is that, happening. Like looking at the pills, going like, well, you know, you know, the cops are coming, and yeah, you know, and so they decide to you know give her the pills. Molly agrees to take the pills, and then the doorbell rings, and we're like, oh shit, the cops are here! Yeah. Take the pills, take the pills, and then it's her nephews. Ted and mm-hmm. Tripoli. Yeah. So they come in. Pardon me. They come in and they don't understand what's going on. No, right? because they're there because they know they were they they think their uh their aunt is fine. Like she didn't kill those people. Mm-hmm. She, there, there's nothing wrong with her. But they I mean they go downstairs and they also come into the whole shared thing because they start giving her the pills and feeding her the vodka as well. Like the well, she they're says she needs her. the pills, she, yeah. and and they're like, you know, can you get them for me or right. whatever? And I think they, I don't know if they know she takes pills, but they don't know the they're killing place. her. No, no, they I mean, don't. It's just it's we- like it's this weird. is a horror movie, yes. you know, like this is a <laughs> those like oh Jesus, now you're getting these kids. Because right. I think at some point, uh, you know, Long John's like, or was it Long John or, or Doris was like, the kids can't stay here. I think Doris said it. Yeah, he's like the kids can't, or maybe Long John did. Oh, the kids can't. Yeah, they can't this. stay here, Molly. You know, because he knows what what's going on. Because I think like maybe you could get away with saying, "Well, she took a bunch of pills on her own, right?" Yeah. Because I mean, eventually you got to answer for this, <laughs> especially now if you're going to have the kids saying, "Oh no, we sat around and we gave her the pills." Yeah, no, right. we sat here and gave her the pills in the vodka officer. It's uh, that was us. Yeah. Um, and at some point Doris, I think has that moment of like, we can't do this, you know? Right. Yeah. She, she does have a thing where she's like, Oh, and she goes down to Molly and, and is holding on to her. And I mean, this is the part where she, this goes away, right? Like, does she die at this point? End up back on her raft free. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. before we see that, we do see like, there's another knock on the door. And when long John goes down there, it's the cops, right. you know, uh, they're standing outside with their badges and it's like, okay, this is the moment. Yeah. But Molly has escaped. Yeah. She has escaped to she, death. She's, <laughs> she's on her raft free sailing away in the distance. Yeah. So she never gets to answer for the things that she's done. She escaped. They euthanized her, I guess. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, <laughs> it's like, I think it's just a thing. It's good for her. That's the way that we're, you know, to see it. Right. It's like she does sail away into the, right. in, onto the, the raft. Um, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, so I guess the question that you have, listeners, would whether we'd recommend that you watch this movie uh, now that we've sat through it 
<laughs> and discussed yeah. it, and you guys and revealed its secret. Did you know? You had no idea then what what, what we were in for. I, no. I know I tried to apologize last week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but now we've gone through it. So uh, not not uh, as bad as you built it up to be. Okay, well, I will good. say that you well, built it up. I, you know, and I don't want to like, say uh, it wasn't. It's as... it's not what you built it up to be because I don't want to use bad or good right now. Okay. But it's not what you built it up to be last mm-hmm. week. Okay, I don't think. I'm I'm intrigued. Okay. I'm kind of curious. That's the how point, go. Colin. Mm-hmm. All right. So you at home are also intrigued. So what we're going to yes. do is, first of all, we're going to uh, answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters. Masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He came from the sea. He had to have, right? Or at least parts of him did, right? Definitely. Seagulls brought parts of him from (laughs) the sea (laughs) and to us here, and that's how he got them. Do you think he has gills? I was going to say, are they human parts? Ah, It's hard to tell at this point. He's a mix, yeah. 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 Who knows? Ooh, Mm -hmm. I wonder... There's gills somewhere, right? Somewhere. Yeah. He may have them on his like, feet <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah. He's probably got them. <laughs> well, we want to remind the good folks at home how you can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, The Witch Who Came From the Sea, B-Movie Vault writes in and says, Oh dear, this is one of the very few films that I've programmed blind and felt compelled to apologize (laughs) for afterwards. He says, The poster did not in any way reflect what we were about to see. Oh no. And best of luck. So I'm assuming he's programming a film festival screening or something. B-Movie poster, please follow up with more. I want more details (laughs) on this story. How did people react to uh, I'm like I'm very curious and yeah I, what kind of audiences so I, I need to know all the details yeah I would like this. to know the details yeah. as well. what, what yes. point in the marathon was it could did you, you hit feel when the were, energy when shift? they were very sensitive yes. like one o'clock at, at what point did you know you'd made a mistake <laughs> yeah. yeah I want I want yeah. a breakdown I want a timeline on yes this. yes give me like the six part podcast series on this event <laughs> yeah <laughs> I want yeah. the true crime version yes, of yeah. what happened here yes. who was the victim I want victim interviews yes. I want everything and uh, C. Huds is writing in. Hey, ah, what Chuds. up, Chuds? And he says, I could not finish this one. Yeah. Where did you stop? Uh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, let us know where you Again. stopped. I want to yeah. know. What, what was point? the last thing you saw? Yeah, where did you uh, bust out? Where, what, was, yeah. what did it for you? But those are the only two comments we got about this movie, meaning either that it's so far under the radar or... Uh, well, now that we've covered it next week, it'll be... There you it'll go. Be it'll disgusting. be unbody disgusting. Yeah, there goes, someone's going to be like, oh, we're thinking about remaking this. They're going to the c- convention circuits. The people in the movie will be on the Somebody from this circuits. will die yep, or something. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. This we're we're getting to it yep. first. Uh, uh, last week, we watched a movie called Hellbound, starring Chuck Norris. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen writes in and says, Fucking hell, this movie <laughs> brings back memories. I was palpitating with anticipation for this when I saw it in the new releases at the local video store. Oh, I yes. loved Chuck Norris as a dumb action loving 13 year old kid and the fact the bad guy rips hearts out was even better. <laughs> then I watched it and woke up to myself and the era of Chuck was over and I needed to move on. Oh, I'm sorry oh. this burst that bubble oh, for you. That's a sad that. moment when you realize <laughs> that as a kid. This is what, see the power Chuck has? Don't right. do it. <laughs> Scraw 793 says Chuck Norris is the reason why Waldo is hiding. Okay. <laughs> All right. okay I like that one. <laughs> Travis Legler says Chuck Norris does not sleep. He lies awake in regret. Oh, I don't believe <laughs> oh. he has regrets. I don't like that one. Chuck Norris has no regrets. Uh, Michael Whitaker <laughs> says when Frank Shatter was born, that's his character. Yeah. When Frank Shatter was born, the doctor asked him to name his parents. I read that one earlier. I yeah. like that one. He yeah. says, hey, it also works with character names, too. Yeah, yeah. It does. Frank yeah. Shatter. Frank Shatter slapped his parents. Yeah. Uh, Bill Hainer says, I don't know if he ever faced the devil, but it wouldn't surprise me if he did. But I submit for freak show approval, our pet rooster, Cluck Norris. Oh, my God. I love it. Yes. And uh, probably a redhead as well. Send pictures. I want to send. Well, we have, we, we have oh, the we pictures. Do? Sorry, oh, I don't nice. have them right here. But oh, okay. yep. Um, Colin's and, keeping all the adorable sorry. pet pictures Can he? Yeah. yeah. Can I he round ass kick? I'm very curious. Oh, yeah. Can he? We need an update. Yeah. Uh, we, a lot of viewer yeah. email updates. Yeah. Bring them in, folks. Yeah. But uh, Bill also says that he just realized that he met the devil himself. He re- he met uh, actor Christopher Neem and has uh-huh. a photo he sent us. Uh, oh, that's oh, so cool. Nice. <laughs> How creepy do you look? Yeah. Let's find out. We'll look at the picture yeah. later. There you go. Well, the week before we watched a movie called... Well, that's not right. Wait, 
Yeah. Well, we did uh, Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker? Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, remember we were out of Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, okay, so we had a, uh, if you listen to that episode, there was a lot of talking about milk and yep. the consumption. The movie, there's a lot of milk in the movie, though. It's not like it was just us tangenting about milk. It was a lot of milk drinking. Milk movie, a lot, there yeah. was a lot of milk in that movie. Yeah. And we asked the folks at home, like, do you guys just drink like glasses full of milk? Is that like a normal thing? Uh. Travis Legler says, we did. I used to drink milk all the time before I was a diabetic. I love milk. Then again, I'm also from Wisconsin. <laughs> it's that? illegal to not like it up there. I yeah. mean, that's true. I used to drink a well, lot yeah, of milk. No, I used to. That's what I'm saying. I used to, too, as a kid in the 90s in the got milk era. But now as an adult, yeah, I don't choose to ever no, drink No, I never. Milk. I have, uh, I mean, it's almond milk, but I have cereal and shit. Yes, still on cereal, milk. that's if it. I have a, if I have a cookie, I will have a small glass of right. milk. Right. Yeah, but I'm not just mean. having it as a beverage No, on its own. not at yeah. all. I mean, sometimes I will chug it out of the carton. No, you're one of those. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the step. You're drinking milk. Yeah. You are a milk drinker then. Yeah. Okay, you fine. are doing you're it. You're a milk yeah. drinker. That's Michael fine. Whitaker <laughs> says. How that. dare you all insult him? <laughs> yeah. It just sounds like an insult, you milk drinker. In, in, in the video game Skyrim, it is an insult. Because oh, is it? In Skyrim, there's a race of like cat people. Oh, because and, we're humans? And yeah, uh, well, there's humans and cat people and lizard people, but like. The cat people, like everyone's really racist towards the cat people, so they called milk drinkers like a slur. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds All right, like yeah. it is, though. Yeah, so, it does. Watch what you're throwing yeah. at me. Yeah. yeah. Michael Whitaker says, it's funny, when I moved away to college, my parents admitted to me that after I left, they stopped buying at least two gallons of milk a week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's propaganda. See, it's a thing. Uh, Scraw793 also wrote in and said, uh, after watching the flick, I think that's only if... Uh, if Susan Terrell was not around, you'd see her coming. You uh, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't, wait, you see her coming. You want to be the face you see somewhere else. Talk about over-the-top performance. I would be terrified of her on that set. Oh, I they were talking you about. You wouldn't want to run, like, run around, come around the corner and run into her. Yeah, her coming towards you. you. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. She's uh, yeah, mm-hmm. off the chain in that movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. She's, check off. Out. She's off everything. It. After you listen <laughs> to her. She's free. She's loose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought about tonight's movie, The Witch Who Came From the Sea, starting with me. I'm going to go first tonight. <sighs> the Witch Who Came From the Sea. In, uh, I won't be shy. I'm going to recommend this movie because of the central performance of Millie. What's her last name? Perkins. Millie Perkins. Um, I think she gives, I think the performances in this movie, it's not a, I don't know. It doesn't quite come off as a straight narrative movie. Um, I really do kind of like the title of this movie works for me as far as what the story goes. I like the, like, let's put it this way. The themes in this movie are interesting, um, to watch and, um, talk about afterwards. Um, I think the performances by some people, I mean, it's just weird performances, but in a way that I can't look away from there's content in this that is so weird that I can't look away from it. Like, especially when you get to the end where the kids end up feeding her pills, um, portrayals by the sister, just the all out weirdness of how of the the way this movie was made. I don't know. It's an it's an odd feeling movie. There's some stuff in here that is, I, I mean, for lack of a better word, it can be uh, triggering. Obviously, we have things, themes of um, child, mol- child molestation, suicide. Um, I mean, assisted suicide at the end of this thing. It's uh, this movie's out there. Um, you're definitely not going to get what you think you're going to get based on the cover and the title. But I think it's a, I think it's an interesting movie, um, and the way it's played, yeah, I I recommend it. It's not, I'm gonna say, not an easy watch, but I think it's one. I think there's a lot more to this movie um, than I, you know, the title and the cover let on. Uh, yeah, I'll recommend it just because it's, it feels like an oddity to me, um, and I enjoyed the conversation we had about it, and I think it's a very interesting movie in that way. So I will recommend the witch who came from the sea. You you should you stop um, putting it out there like oh I'm, I'm bringing something bad guys I apologize because you never know <laughs> well the content you know I mean, you're, you're like, right the you're content is yeah, the like, content yeah. is yeah. but the again the deeper we get into the freak show I'm not as affected as much by these things I don't know if that's ever a good that, thing so or you're a saying you're thing. desensitized yeah <laughs> I love that about this show yeah so I mean there we are uh, Michaela what did you think. I, I think so we've done a lot of like sleazy movies in the past on the show, right? We have like a spectrum of sleaze, right? So like <laughs> if I'm looking at this spectrum, I'm thinking on 
the one end there's like brain brain damage was the Aylmer movie right mm-hmm. like, yeah. so there's like the Hen and Ladder stuff like brain damage and Frankenhooker and um, then in the middle I would say it's like Angel right where it's like mm. it's sleazy but it's still got some heart and still has really good characters and really likable moments and it like it makes you feel things other than gross wait can I guess what's on the very other end the very other end Possession? is the, yeah yeah <laughs> well I don't know if that's a sleazy movie I don't think that would be sleazy okay. the okay. movie's You're right. just I don't know. It's an other thing. some yes. But and then like on the other end of the spectrum, I think you have like the baby. Okay. Where there's no humor to be found in that movie. Okay. Like uh, in, uh, at least intentional. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And You're it's right. just pure darkness and it's <laughs> more than people should take in in one sitting, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. And I think that unfortunately this movie for me falls too close to the baby end of the sleeve spectrum. Okay. There's not a there's not a lot of jokes here or at least intentional ones. Like Daphne has diarrhea no. was hilarious just because <laughs> she wa- she walked into the scene like that scene in the room where the mom walks in and says, I definitely have breast cancer. Right. It was just yeah. like that. Just, it's just definitely the shock a diarrhea. Of, right, yeah. just the shock of hearing that. Yeah. What, whoa. Right, but yeah. that was not, like, there aren't moments of comedy in this movie. No. And there's no, like, levity really at all to be had in this movie. I mean, Everything, I struggled a few times, but it wasn't, I uh, doubt it was appropriate. Yeah, it, 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 it's dark and sleazy and just kind of, the scenes are really long and relenting at times and it doesn't seem like there's really a point or that that's earned. And it's weird because this movie's not that long. Like it's mm. under an hour 30, right? Like, mm. and so, but it's, it just, the sleaze, there's not enough good stuff to balance out the sleaze for me and that makes it not enjoyable. So I'm going to pass on it. I think that, yeah, you're not going to get the poster. You're not even like to even say witch is a generous term for this movie because there is no supernatural, no witchcraft, no anything. It, it is more like just a weird 70s unhinged drama. You know, um, I mean, it's a horror movie it has horror elements, but like you don't see anything and it's all implied and it's just it, there's not enough good to outweigh the grossness of this movie for me. So I'm going to pass on it. Colin, I have a question. Do we know what the writer and director were going for, if anything at all? For this movie, like wh- what their purposes, intentions, why they wanted to make the movie. Yeah, I mean, th- well, they've explicitly said it was, you know, they were trying to make a movie to shine a light on you know, on her. Uh, well, no, well, to be a showcase for her as okay. an actress, but also to kind of do a movie about a very difficult subject okay. about, you know, the lingering effects of, uh, you know, child abuse sure. and how that can, you know, I mean, I guess that's the thing. It's like. I came away from this movie affected by it. I guess, yes. you know, I had a lot of sympathy for Molly, but at the same time, it's like, she's a monster. Like you, you cannot have her in society. Yes. You know, it's like if for reasons that were beyond her control, you know, um, there's a lot of, there may not be level levity in this movie, but there's a lot of warmth that feels like from some of these characters, uh, you know, the characters at the bar, um, you know, Doris uh, it gets some comedy just from being, you know, she swears like a sailor. She's right. been around for, you know, she's a bartender who's been around forever. And just claiming that she knows all the secrets and everything like that aspect about her. I don't, I don't like people like that, but it's a good aspect for her character. Yeah. Cause it feels more, you know, genuine, I suppose in some way and not that, you know, I mean, I guess I always say that I kind of, I like these movies, the seventies movies for their honesty not so much that like agreeing with any, uh, you know, uh, uh um, well, yeah, not so much agreeing with what they're saying, yeah. but the fact that they are saying it yeah. honestly, because this is more, I think like what human, uh, beings are like, yeah. you know, off, off cameras, sure. <laughs> you know, whatever. And it's like the seventies, it just seemed like showed you people, you know, warts and all <laughs> it's like it just raw. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there you go. And so I guess uh, the whole movie kind of gives that vibe off. It's just like, I am seeing something, I guess it's, you know, forbidden, uh, you know, it's like, and it makes you feel uh, gross. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, like I said, the, through the performance of um, Millie Perkins, uh, it's like a, it's a performance. It's like outside of the scope of the movie. I mean, everybody's good, but she's like great, mm. you know, in this little part. And um, I thought the writing was actually pretty good trying to, um, you know, through her psychological like metaphors or allusions to like how the trauma had buried itself in her psychology and was like coming off yeah. as these, you know, uh, nautical, 
uh <laughs> you know metaphors i was like okay this is interesting it's like we're getting the story and getting to understand this person and all the blocks that she has that she isn't aware of you know it's like it's a fascinating movie yeah i i loved it i uh like i said i first saw it and i was like this is something you know that uh, nobody seems to know about but it stood out to me as like you know a fine example of this uh, low budget um, filmmaking style of that era. And uh, then I saw it again on shutter like last year. And I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta commit and get me a copy of this and show it to the Saturday night freak show. Uh, <laughs> uh, so here we are. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that you check this movie out. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great seventies um, movie. The, uh, the, I'm just looking at the, uh, the tagline on the poster which I, I hid it from you when you came in I, I flipped it around so it was the arrow cover but the, it's like Molly really knows how to cut men down to size I'm like well you're kind of giving away like you know some of the stuff that you may not know uh, going into it but uh, yeah uh, I would recommend it for sure then that is I guess the final word on uh, the witch who came from the sea mm-hmm. yep. next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Sean what are we watching next week now, remember you, you said uh, this movie made you feel dirty. <laughs> yes. So uh, in order to get all of that off of us, I think we all need a day at the spa. Oh. So right. we will be watching Death, Death Spa. spa. Sweet. All right. <laughs> We've been looking forward to this yeah. one since, uh, was it Killer Spa? Killer, killer Workout. Killer Workout. Killer workout. Right, right, right. Yeah. Death Spa. Sweet. Death, Death Spa. spa. Right. So from the sea to the spa, yeah. off we go. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, that's next week. We hope you'll join us as always. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.